Hey, this show is brought to you by Manscaped. Yeah? Use that promo code DANGLE. 20% off and free shipping. Just around the holiday season, too. How great is that? It's really great. I, I took some body wash out of the box. So Did mind. you? No, yeah. I don't mind at all. Are you giving it to somebody or yourself? No, no, it's mine. Oh, that's <laughs> well, there you go. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your host, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Hey, so just... Uh, a heads up, today's show is going to be a little shorter because of some scheduling conflicts, but yes. then Wednesday and Friday will be our normal length shows because um, normally we do like longer show Monday, longer show Wednesday, shorter show Friday. Um, now we're going to reverse it. We like to flip it and reverse it. Four hour show on Wednesday. Yeah. 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 Four it. hours. Four hours. Whoo. Again, I'm ready. I'm already doing push ups for it. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't do enough. <laughs> I feel like I don't do enough. I don't know if you could tell. I don't but know I don't if that helps. Are, are you going to do clap push-ups? Or are you going to do those elbow ones that you see on Instagram? Okay, the elbow ones. <laughs> what is that? Do I ever, you never see those? No, Do you no. ever feel like the elbow no. ones are, I'm like, when I watch the elbow ones, I'm like, yo, guys, like. You, you don't could, need to be doing all you that. You don't need to be doing all that. That's no. your showing off at that point. The mm-hmm. If you just pushed your body, it would be the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't know explosion. I quick, need I need quick. my elbows to be tougher. Just also, like, there's a return on investment eventually when you're just too strong. You shouldn't be doing eight, 80 push ups. Right. Like, go lift heavier weights yeah. than your body. You're clearly too strong for push ups. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, like, there's no reason to watch that on Instagram. It's not helpful to you. It's like watching the Olympics. You can't do those things. <laughs> like, sure. the, you know who I follow on Instagram? There's this woman named Dr. Katie Claire, and she shows you how to unfuck your hips. Nice. You know what I need to know? How to unfuck my hips. Because they're fucked. They're for regular people. Yeah, that's all I gotta, stretches. And- just unfuck them. That's all I got to do. You know, just just lift it up like this so I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't do the oh, I can't do that. It's a bit all over the place. It's too much. It's just too much. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if there was like a way um, that like you could you do a push up. You just push up. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. I'm just thinking like point of contact, like how many spots would hit. You know I, what I mean when they hit yeah. when they do those boards. There's got to be a better way to do it. I think there is, which is I think you mentioned it before. A, a, a normal crazy. One. My favorite uh, exercise TikToker is JPG. Do you know him? No, he's he just does the he he explains everything you want in the simplest way. He, he, he does a bunch of lifting stuff, and it'll be like, okay, step one, step two. Does he say you should? It's and no- if you're not, you're not a man. <laughs> it's, completely, TikTok. it's completely non-aggressive. It's very straightforward, and he's very knowledgeable. I like Liver King. I was nope. just about to say. <laughs> I'm a Liver King guy. Are you up to date on all <laughs> that drama? Oh, okay. So for people that don't know, Liver King is a highly tanned, very muscly man who has a beard like a Viking. And his whole thing is eating raw meat and eating raw livers. And it's it's kind of gross, but you're also like, I kind of need to watch a little of this. I get about 20 seconds in. I'm like, I'm done. I swipe on to the next thing. I don't. But his whole thing was, what's it? It's it primal or something. There's some sort of thing where it's like, we need to get back to the way our ancestors ate. And he's got a voice yeah, like this. Yeah, our gotta, ancestors that died in their 30s. You got yes. to eat like they did in the 1300s. And they didn't cook anything. And and you don't and you shouldn't. And the whole reason that the human brain was actually able to evolve as quickly as it was, they they think, is because we figured out how to cook things. Uh, yeah, this guy. That's. Uh... Yeah. Anyway, is we figured out how to cook things, which allows our stomach to take nutrients from things a lot easier. It turns out this guy is on a regimen of twelve thousand dollars worth of steroids per month. Oh, my God. And you, you know. It should have been a tip off. Like now that I look at him, he's the color of all the professional wrestlers I watched growing That's up. That's right. The guy who looks like he's on steroids is on a bunch of steroids. It's crazy. Look at and the most, thickness of that vein. In, in, Holy in shit. most cases, <laughs> oh my god, they often do look <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. Look at that like, shit. Like, uh, yeah. No, I, I don't know. I think. I think he just got it from so Eden's I, over. I didn't hear about this guy until the steroid scandal oh, came out. Like, I didn't know. He was, I've been, does he have, like, a TLC show? No, he's got no. a YouTube channel. He's a got YouTube millions of followers. And people believed him. Oh, it's believed in this. TikTok is wild for, hey, 
You've never heard of this person, but they have 4.6 billion followers and they've just been canceled. That was like Andrew, Andrew Tate. Tate. Yeah. I didn't hear about Andrew Tate until Andrew Tate. How did you avoid like, Andrew Tate? I didn't know until they didn't see was the like, Hustlers University. I had no women. fucking idea. Holy no, shit. I didn't know. My no algorithm idea. was so broke. It was like, Andrew Tate's on here and he's got his dumb sunglasses on. He's like, yeah, you wouldn't even believe it. What color is your Bugatti? What color is your Bugatti? Yeah, no, no, it's no. like, shut the fuck this up, man. No, he was here's canceled. what he said about this. And here's what he said about that. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, you're going to need to stop. You're going to need to start from who the fuck is this person? Yeah. And why should I care what they have to the say? The first video I saw of Andrew Tate was him going, my brother is married to a wonderful woman, but I see her as his property. And I was like, okay, oh my I'm out. God. Literally, that was the sentence. Oh my God. And I was like, okay, I'm out. I'm out. So what's happened now is that he's been unbanned from a bunch of shit because Elon took over Twitter. Oh, or weird. And on TikTok. Now, now a whole bunch of clips of him are being put out there that are like, he's actually, you got him all wrong. He's not (laughs) anti-feminist and he's not, he's actually all of the things you thought uh, that that, that the media never portrayed him as. Uh, And so, and now he's fighting Jake Paul as well. You know, what the media doesn't tell you is all the things he said directly in on mic. Shut the fuck up. I know, I know. Shut up. So with this guy, I, I watched, okay, so the longest I've ever watched him is like a minute and a half and I watched his apology video. Okay. So he apologized. He apologized because oh, he was out for the steroids. Oh, him. Yeah. Oh, the liver. Not king. Andrew Tate. No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. We're, oh, back, so we're liver, back to liver. Liver king. king ab- Sorry, I was pointing at his vein. Yes. It's a gigantic vein. <laughs> that I is. Can't believe this vein. Oh my god. That is. Look at. It's like a triangle that go. There's two mega it's like veins. Like a trident. Oh yeah. It almost looks like it was steroided yeah. up. Yeah. Imagine that. Anyway, long story short, this um, this guy. Sits down and he, it's so funny because he's got like he's made a ton of money off this, this and he's sitting in like up. a medieval castle with a spiral staircase in the back and he's got literally what looks like a throne and yeah. you know what those medieval chairs look like yeah. right mm-hmm. big like a, wooden a, high back chair a shtick is fine whatever yeah so he's sitting the, and he's like brothers and sisters I want to apologize and he's doing his thing and and he's like uh and and you're like waiting for it to happen you're waiting for it to happen you're waiting and then he finally says I have uh, I have been working with uh, uh an, an hgh specialist and i have been under their care for a while now and blah 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 blah. and he's like i'm just really upset because you know my whole thing was mental health you know especially with men where it's really hurting and so he goes off into this whole diatribe about how his whole goal with the eating of the raw shit was was to help men with their mental health and get back to their primal urges where they're dumb and, and they're strong yeah, no, you know what's but bad also, for your mental health is doing all the shit this guy tells you to do and achieving not even it. 10% of his success because he is on actual steroids. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like it's like I can I did and you can too, except that you can't. Because I spent $120,000 a year, it helps. $240,000 a year on steroids alone. It helps in recovery too. If I did all the things he does, I'd snap in half. You know why? I'm not on steroids. Yeah. Yeah, I got on oh, my back sore, shoulder, you know, neck. You know what would help all those things? Well, you could take some anti-inflammatories. Yeah. You could go to physiotherapy or you could take $12,000 a month of steroids. Three times a day. Every two months, you're buying a brand new Mazda 3 oh, worth gosh. of steroids. <laughs> Jesus. Well, it's that's 12,001 plus a dollar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I, I did want to say, though, that he... Uh, he has got steroids. A steroid. Oh, sorry. He has, he has a catch on people. People really believe this. Wow. And, then, and there were people who were commenting on the video who were like, listen, the steroids could only account for so much. A lot of this is just straight up hard work and his diet. You guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And, <laughs> and it's like, Bro. like, okay, man, we all watched wrestling in the 80s. We all watched baseball in the 90s. I know how much bigger your muscles are when you're on steroids. Yeah, I come from a generation of men who grew up wanting to look like Ultimate Warrior when they were children. That's right. Tiny yes. waist, gigantic V-shaped back. Yeah. You know? And uh, then you listen to his uh, promos, and you're like, oh, they might have had some effect. <laughs> have they you were. seen the WWE promos that they cut out all the words? It's just the, the guy's breathing? I sent that just to you, all- and it's always amazing for a just- laugh. <laughs> <laughs> They're hyperventilating for three Macho minutes. Macho Man, yes. Ric Flair, all of <laughs> <laughs> It's incredible, yeah. incredible, Just incredible. giving her. Oh. Drenched in sweat. Uh, anyway. Mitch Marner broke a record. How many subscribers do you have, Steve, on your YouTube channel? Uh, 197,000. All right, Liver King's got 233. All right. 
233,000? Yeah. Oh, I thought he would have had way more than that. No, so I was reading some of the comments on the apology video, and apparently he's only been like at it hardcore for like a year. So he's, Damn. Already, he's already canceled. Guys, yeah, I joined October 12th, 2021. Wow. He's, he's already peaked and he's down on the other I side. Suck. What I suck. What a journey. I got a question. I stink. Is there, if you wanted to further the cause of men's mental health, that's the only way to do it, right? There are no other ways. The only way to right, properly no, help right. men with their mental health is to eat raw shit, yeah. walk around with your t-shirt off, and pretend that you don't do steroids. Yeah. yeah. I, like, explicitly say I do not do steroids, and you do so much steroids. You do so <laughs> much steroids. No, but, but, but the only way is to do it the way he did it. Yeah, like if he yeah. really want if that was his altruistic mm -hmm. goal, yeah, it would be just the way that he did it. This is like me doing LFR, but the crux of LFR is me talking about my experience in the OHL. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great example. <laughs> that is a perfect was, example. <laughs> Here's uh, where he should have been, and I know that because I played in the Ontario Hockey League. <laughs> <laughs> you might have heard rumors that I went to skating lessons until I was like five, and then you know dropped it. And that's it. You make your own hockey DB but page? No, no, no. Yeah, I make my own hockey DB page. <laughs> and then a year in, you'd have to issue an apology. Yeah, no. And the only reason I you, have to you apologize. can't find any of it is because I played for Flint. <laughs> no I was one on cares. Flint. Or no, it would have to be Plymouth. They played for the Plymouth Whalers. I was Tyler Sagan's line mate. They deleted all the footage. Fuck off. <laughs> um, I, thought, I thought you were going to go with like a Cyrano de Bergerac thing where you were like fed your lines. Like you're Steve Dangle, yeah. but you're not actually funny. It's, it's just like it's yeah. just somebody else writing your script no, for you. Uh, Steve Steve saying he played in the O. Yeah, like that's a that's an equivalent here. It yeah. is, and then you try to keep that up. Yeah, no, no and, <laughs> but the way I do it is people go, but you never played, and I'm like, I know. <laughs> but I've been trying to further the cause of men's mental yeah, health. Yeah, I've been trying uh, to further the cause of men's <laughs> mental health. Get them back to their prime. Telling being. you how to <laughs> how to play hockey from my experience as Tyler Sagan's line mate in the OHL. Get the fuck out of here. Do you think 10 minutes on Liver King and Andrew Tate is long enough? No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. I There was a point, though. Oh, uh, I really will move know. us on. Okay. Where we could not, I could not get away from Andrew Tate videos. It's crazy. And then it went away, and now it's back again. And there's just nothing you can do. It's the just amount? there. It's back again for your algorithm. What's wrong Mine's with my algorithm? Dogs. What am I watching? Like, I just watch dog videos. I don't know. Well, yeah, I... I lie to my algorithm. I mm. lie to it. I like this Red Dead video and this Red Dead video and this Red Dead video and this hockey video and this basketball video and this Red Dead video. And it's still like, you might hate women though. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I freaking I, Red Dead, hockey, and basketball. Yeah, but like, they talk a lot. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. Red Dead, hockey, and basketball. But then it's like, true. you know, you don't hate them at all. Well, I, no, fuck. Okay, so anyway. maybe there are app developers who do social media back <laughs> behind the scenes. What is it with watching some of that stuff? Uh, anything to do with, like, real estate? Oh, same thing. Uh, but you know what? I bet you'd hate if your realtor was a woman, right? Yeah. Like, you'd, oh you'd probably God. hate Literally, that. and that's, and that, it's like, I, I almost wonder. I didn't say that. TikTok like, did. Who creates those funnels, right? Like, is that is that a computer or is that, or is that a team of people where it's like, people who like Red Dead also like... It's a team Andrew of people Tate. who program the computers to be racist. Is that what it Sorry, is? Sorry, misogynist. misogynist. Sorry, okay. both. Um, okay, so anyway, listen, I think I think if we're going to start the show off with some hockey after our twenty minute discussion there on Liver King, <laughs> um, I think that the thing that we should, as beta males, talk about. I want to delete that portion of the show. What? It's awful. <laughs> uh, as beta <laughs> soy boy like males, something a beta would say. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this well, did it hurt your feelings, Jesse? This fucking Ooh. guy. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Trigger oh, my shock. Ooh. I'm shocked he reached 233 with his fucking shtick. Yeah. I'm shocked that's all he hit. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, but no, no, he had more on TikTok. Oh, Way yeah. more. That, no, that was more. his main pro pro um, platform, but, right? But uh, right, do you want long form me lying? <laughs> then follow me on <laughs> fuck off. I felt like I had a connection with Looks Liver good King. good on you. Liver King. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the How game. About shit. How about a channel where you just eat shit? You big liar. Cat poo? Yeah. yeah. Like the guy on Twitter. Got him a job. Like yeah. our ancestors eat raw shit. And you get as big as a mountain. Go fuck yourself. Why don't we That's all get, get polio for fun? Yeah, because our ancestors, yeah. you know, all the depictions of our ancestors is how fucking jacked they were. <laughs> yeah. You know, I love looking at British peasants and men. Holy fuck, that guy is jacked. Yeah. No, he's starving. He's starving. 
Work in the field for his Lord. Jeez. Anyway, I would like to talk about the big game of the weekend, which was, of course, the Habs v. Oilers. Everybody cares about the Habs v. Oilers. Do we not? It was a great game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was. It would have been cool if I just didn't watch it. Well, you, sh you should have. Should I have? You Tell me about your takeaways from the Habs v. Oilers team. Uh, Nick Suzuki had himself a game. Man, that guy. Is he going to live up to that contract? Well, yes, there's some, no. some who say he, he can't. He had he the Habs season in a nutshell. His, his snipe, great shot. And mm -hmm. also, he got a penalty for throwing the puck. <laughs> and you know what's amazing? It wasn't even the only throwing the puck penalty of the day. John Gibson did it with 10 seconds left in overtime. I've never seen a goalie just yeet the puck up the gut, which apparently you're not allowed to do. And uh, then the Ducks ended up losing in overtime. It'd be way better if you could. Wouldn't it be? I actually like that. Why not? Well, because then I'm watching the World Cup and I'm like, you should be able to do that. You should be allowed. But maybe, like, what if you're allowed to throw the puck to whoever you want, wherever you want, as long as you're standing in the blue paint? I love that. Love that. Like, imagine your goaltender now has to be a good discus thrower. I love that. Like literally, they're doing a spin in the crease. Yeah, just trying to trying to get that thing down the ice. And how much more speed you can get? Oh, I think we're skates. getting away from Habs Oilers. Yeah, you're right. It's, yeah, Sorry. my but bad. That was watch a game with Steve Daigle. So, yeah. so uh, there were seven goals in the game. Five of them were on the power play. And Connor McDavid is an actual mutant. He's uh, scary. Jake Allen uh, has had a great season, and uh, there was one goal in particular. Where they they often talk about being handcuffed by a shot. Goalies mm -hmm. talk about being handcuffed. Matt Murray said that about the overtime winner the Lightning scored. I think it was. Uh, Allen didn't move. Like, I think one of the things you should... For my career in the OHL, what I learned is if Connor McDavid <laughs> is... What are you laughing at? If Connor McDavid attacks you, you should, like, move to try to stop it. From my experience you in played the for OHL. Plymouth, right? I played for Plymouth yeah, I and I was on a line with Tyler Sagan and also I was the team. How the many how many goalie. points did you have in uh 107 weight? Uh, yeah, I beat him by about 40 points. Wow. Yeah. Man, you were great. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I take my references from you, yeah. former OHL player. Um I I uh, I don't remember what I was did going you think of that. Stuart Skinner? Um not the best. Mm. Um no. I mean, he you won. hear what he said about you. Yeah, well, you know what? Where was he when I was lighting it up in Plymouth? Right, you're right. You know, <laughs> where was he? Get, gets, he? He's a pigeon. That's what we called them yeah, yeah, back in the O. What, he's what a pigeon. Of, what did you think of Stuart Skinner? Um, he, uh, he gives up really big, juicy rebounds. Um, and it's something that I've noticed a little bit about the Leafs goalies is sometimes the rebounds are there for them too. But what... I don't say this often, but uh, times are changing and the Leafs defense is at least middle of the pack. It's it's not bad. What the Leafs defense does well that I don't think the Oilers defense does well at all is clear the rebounds. Mm. Uh, but Skinner Skinner kicks them out. There's nothing subtle about him. Um, and uh, Joel Armia picked up his first point of the season. Dodonov picked up his second goal. Do you think the Leafs bottom six is hurting? Oh, boy. Habs bottom six can't get anything done, uh, but Skinner was okay. I was because like I uh, I was watching fantasy closely, like the, the waiver wire and everything. And Stuart Skinner was an easy pickup. And since uh, November twelfth, he is five and two. And I don't know if it's a thing that the Oilers are playing better in front of him as opposed to Campbell, but I think right now I declare him the starter over Jack. I agree with you, but uh, the his numbers are terrible. <laughs> over that span no he's he's still a nine what is it 14 9 11 on the season on the season but you're talking about this little streak he's on even though he's five and two over yeah, that time span he's got what two games over 900 out of those he's got seven? uh yeah one two three four four oh, games no, no. over over 900 yeah he had he had three games where he was particularly poor but three games where he was at very least league mm -hmm. average if not above yeah you're right you're right. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the Kings do with Peterson, and I don't know what the Oilers do with Campbell. And Campbell's so much more dire because he's older than Peterson, and he signed for two more years. Yeah, that's like a five years contract. This, is this one of those situations where, like Campbell, I feel is is almost like what the Kings had with Quick, where you're stuck with it. So make it work. Or Bobrovsky in Florida, stuck with it, make at, it work. At least you look at Quick and have fond memories, though. <laughs> Campbell just got there, man. I know. Like, I know, but yeah, there's no there's no track record with Jack Campbell in in Edmonton, unfortunately. And it has a lot to do with their defense. 
Like their defense hasn't. I don't know your perspective on their defense on Saturday. I, w- I don't know what it is, but like I don't it's, think it's been great all year poor. long. They allow a lot of high danger scoring chances uh, the other way to their opponents. They and always have. And, and, they, they and they never have. really addressed it. Yes. We see it a lot in the goaltending play where they have to face all of these high danger shots. But the thing is, the defense looks a lot better when Stuart Skinner is in that. A little bit. Yeah. It's better. It it's is. Not, yeah. Guys, the, have no, you watched no, the Jack Campbell game? Yeah, no pucks. A lot better. Pucks go through Campbell. Right. Um, I, I didn't see any pucks go through Skinner to my memory. Okay. Um, uh, and they struggle. I think they would struggle against a team with a better forecheck uh, than Montreal because... Um, Another thing they I noticed them struggle with, although I don't think they ever paid for it with a goal, is uh, when the other team has the puck behind their net. Interesting. Uh, it's staying there. <laughs> it's staying there until they throw it in front for a scoring chance. Yeah. Last eight games for Jack Campbell, how many games above a 900? Last how many games? Eight games. One. Two. Two. Hoy eh. hey. I mean, Oilers fans, I'm sure you've heard it from Leaf fans. Um, that guy gets rattled. Um, and they gotta, they gotta give him. They gotta find ways to get his confidence back. Um, maybe you give him the easier starts for the next little bit. You know, mm-hmm. you're playing. Um, I don't know. I know Washington's in Alberta right now. Um, or are they? They they played the Flames the other day. I don't remember. So who they should. Where. Play, they're going to play the Oilers next. Yeah, so, and and Washington's amongst the worst teams in the NHL in goals for, which is shocking, because that's the opposite of their identity. Um, So, you know, maybe give them the Washington game. Yeah, they play Washington. just don't take penalties. They play Washington tonight. There's the schedule there. There you go. So just don't take penalties. Uh, They took way too many against Montreal. McDavid took two and drew two. They're a bunch of fun. They're not the least. Right, and they can but, outscore all their problems. That's yes, the thing here. Like, yeah. Drysdale and McDavid can just make this fine. Yeah, they oh, they, they are the um, the dog days of Babcock uh, on the Leafs on Liver Kings. Like, just on absolute steroids. On $12,000 a month they're worth top, of steroids. They're top heavy. Well, they've won three, or no, they've won two games this season where they were losing 3 nothing. That's not supposed to happen to you more than once in a blue moon, and mm-hmm. it's happened to them twice in the first quarter of the season. <laughs> yeah, they uh, and it's good. It's good mm-hmm. to have that on your in your back pocket. But they've also blown some leads, and they're they're um, ah. Uh, I just don't have the same faith in this current group of Edmonton Oilers that I had in last year's playoffs. Last year's playoffs, I think they very clearly demonstrated. Hmm. Like, all right, we're here, and no, we're not perfect, but it's okay because we have two perfect players. Right. <laughs> in McDavid Are they and better than last year? I don't think so right now. Mm, no. Not, na- not right now, not but right they now are now capable. Now, remember, though, two things changed the Oilers' fortunes last year in a huge way. The first was Jay Woodcroft. Mm-hmm. Yep. So he's behind the bench now, and they're still mediocre. They're better than they were. Before he arrived, but it would crop in that stance and that that and lean that little with that, that butt that lean. Yeah. The other thing that completely changed the complexion of that roster is Evander Kane, and he's not there. It makes your uh, it, you know what makes your defense better when you're always on offense. Yeah, that's fair. And uh, they they lack so in that department. one of the biggest beneficiaries of Evander Kane being out right now though is Zach Hyman, who has been on an absolute tear this season in terms of his points production and just getting shots on goal. He's I don't think he's he's on pace to set career highs. He has nine goals right now, seventeen assists. I hope he plays tonight, actually, but I was surprised he finished the game because did you see the friggin' cross check he took from Joel Edmondson? No. Edmondson got five in a game for it's basically what Matthews did to Darlene, except at the end of it, um uh, Edmondson drove Hyman's head into the glass. Oh, and he and he had this big gash in his forehead, and it led to a five on three. And oh, it's a yeah. Jesse's got it up on the screen right right now. Oh, it's in movement too. Matthews so it, was, was he, no no. Moving. It's twice though. So he gets him once. Good. See, it rides up the shoulder, hits him in the neck, and, and then, then he follows him. it up yeah. by oh. driving his head. So it's interesting with that. He should I, be getting suspended for that. As, like, no, bullshit. he won't because he's not a leaf. Um, he, a, it already happened over twenty four hours. Ago. Uh, if um. 
if the rumors are to be believed, they're going to be teammates in the next week or so. Apparently, Edmonton is potentially willing to offer a first round pick for Joel Edmondson. That's how badly they want him. Who said that? That's I. Well, that's the scuttlebutt. Who? Who? Whomst. Who? I don't. I don't actually have it. Give it. They Give need. The info. They need someone who can do the things prime Joel Edmondson can do. Um, but the uh, someone who can do the things that prime Joel Edmondson could do isn't Joel Edmondson. Hmm. He's that's. I understand the move because that's the type of player they 100% need. And all, you know? But a first? But yeah, that for that guy? Uh-uh. What are you doing? I don't know who was reporting it. I'm what trying you, to find it. But it's, it's always hard to find the original source. Yeah, it's always yeah. repeated, repeated, repeated. Um, like, what are you doing? The, the, other, yeah, the difference like, between Jacob Chikrin and Joel Edmondson is not a first round pick. Like one. Yeah, you know what? Pick. You're like, right. I, I agree with you. I agree with you completely. What did, what did they pay Carolina for him? not that not a first no it's, it was a couple picks i want to say like a third and a fifth or something um we have to yeah jesse's looking it up so my next question is because joel Edmonds said it's like is he or is he not um word on the street from pierre lebrun is that they have started preliminary extension talks with cole caulfield the canadians have oh good and the question becomes what do you pay cole caulfield how many years do you go and at what term now if the shorter if the if the term is shorter the money will be smaller, and which goes counterproductive to what you'd think. But that's the, it's a bridge contract, right? It bridges you to the, the the whopper that you expect to get, right? And if you're the Montreal Canadiens, I think you go long term because, or you try, uh, or you try because uh, I don't know, you're not going to be very good for. <laughs> so if you are going to go long term with Cole Caulfield because you don't need to have a bridge contract, do so you? I mean, if you're going to go seven years or six years, you might as well go eight years. Mm-hmm. That brings the, the amount up because obviously you're buying UFA years at that point. So then what, without looking at his stats, well, what do you think from your perception right now, what's Cole Caulfield worth? And I'm not going to hold you to this. Like, No, no. I, the number I threw out there is I think the conversation starts at eight times eight. Okay. Jesse. Yeah, I, I'd say it's definitely in and around there. I'd probably push it a little higher. Like, I could see him getting a nine-year deal, especially because we expect the salary cap nine to be... year or million? Sorry, nine million yeah. uh, per eight. Right, because the salary's going up salary's this year and go 25. Up. You're paying for a young guy who's only going to get better. I could see nine by eight. Okay. One of the, I believe, one of the top dozen or so scores of 2022, mm-hmm. goal scores of 2022, because he started brutally last year. Like... He, you talk about a weird entry level contract mm-hmm. or a, a weird um, COVID career so far. Playoffs, Co- not playoffs. Like well, <laughs> and and joining the team with ten games left in the season and uh, getting sent to the AHL because you're useless and then getting called up and being the best player on the team and wild start. Well, to his he, career. he was dealt a shit sandwich with his coach. I agree. like one of the th- one of the things I hammered Ducharme for the most, and I know that. Everybody's like, well, uh, he, he, what, what made him a terrible coach is this kid comes in and scores five points in 10 games. And the first couple of games of, of uh, the first round against the Leafs, he gets scratched. Uh, and then <laughs> as soon as he that. comes in, the Leafs can't fucking deal with him. No. And then and then and they get into the finals and he's like, yeah, you know what? You're not going to play. <laughs> I, I just like like it's just absolute stupid decisions. He was and special I, in those playoffs. He was special. Yeah. He's on a roll. You play the hot hand, except mm-hmm. if you're Dom Ducharme, and then you're trying to lose. And the other, so and what are your real feelings about Dom Ducharme? Oh, he stinks. Um, <laughs> oh, just just bad decision making. Super. You know what Dom Ducharme was? He's everything Mark Bergevin would do in NHL 23. Oh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna what? I'm gonna play. I'm not gonna play the skilled player. I'm gonna play the. Um, I'm going to play the the grinders. That's what that was. Dom Ducharme, which is exactly what Bergevin wanted. Uh, Je- Jesse, what was Joel Edmondson worth? Uh, literally two years ago, it was a first round pick, right? A fifth. Oh, a fifth. The so, Hurricanes so I mean, got a fifth round pick from Montreal. So for he's Joel gotten Edmondson. worse. He's gotten worse. Well, he's he's dealt with more injuries. That's what I mean, though. He's older, so he's worse. Just got back. He's older. And Edmonton wants to give that up. I I. Don't think Joel Edmondson to the Oilers is a bad idea necessarily. The I price just, is bad. The price is <laughs> price is stupid. not right. Now I, no. I want to go back to Cole Caulfield for a second because here's my question. Mm-hmm. Okay, so guys, here's here's the reality of Cole Caulfield. Even though he had a slow start last year, so I, I will give that give that to you. He played 67 games because he was scratched a lot. Mm-hmm. He had 43 points. That is his 
career high. Now, he does have 22 points in 24 games this year for the uh, for the Montreal Canadiens. He's the only one on the team that can score. Do you give uh, $8 million right now to a player? And I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong here. Do you give 8 over 8 or 9 over 8 to a player that hasn't even scored their 100th point at the NHL level yet? Uh, well, ask the Minnesota Wild because it looks like they got a discount with Carol Caprizov yeah, right now. Yeah, but, but, that, but he has a older. KHL. Yeah, he's and he's older. older. Ask him about Jason Robertson, you know? I think, mm -hmm. like, these young talents, you need to lock them up. I think it's in the nature of the game. When you have one, keep it, lock it down. And I, any number that's under two digits can make sense for Cole Caulfield. If, if I'm Cole Caulfield, I have a Jason Robertson dartboard in my house. I have a Jason... But at least Jason Robertson oh. had a 40-goal year. No, no, but what, what, what I'm Before, saying is he has put up superior numbers to even Caulfield. Like, he's getting heart consideration, and he signed the deal that he did, and teams are going to push back to the Cole Caulfields of the world with, well, look what he signed for. And the Montreal Canadiens, bit of a different situation, but Nick Suzuki, he's mm -hmm. now their captain, their young captain. They're going to point at his deal, which is not eight times eight. It's seven something, right? I believe. Maybe just flat seven. For context, Jason Robertson is seven point seven five. Seven point seven times three, though, isn't it? Times one, two, three, four. Oh, oh, that's theft! Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, that's a really good deal for and Dallas. Then Mr. Nick Suzuki is seven point eight seven five for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know what's you know what's special about Jason Robertson this year? Just looking Everything. at his stats, um, he had forty one goals last year in a third of the games. So he played seventy four last year. He's played twenty five this year. So a third of the games, he already has half the goals. Twenty three. Yeah, he's he's and on he's got, pace for over seventy goals. It's yeah, seventy five. Uh, like it's just it's Advent. It's yeah. crazy. Also, sorry, uh, Nick Suzuki was uh, seven point eight seven five by eight. He's on the eight. See, if I'm if I'm Montreal, I, I think. First off, Cole Caulfield's a spectacular hockey player. Yeah. And I think any contract you sign him to, whether it's 775 or it's 8, really, does, does anyone give a shit about a quarter million dollars on the salary cap? Yes. Well, the Leafs do. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like, it's not that big of a difference. However, mm -hmm. I think if you're the Montreal Canadiens and you sign Cole Caulfield to a, a, a fatter extension, like, let's say it's a four-year deal, mm -hmm. and that number is anywhere above 775, You've put a ton of pressure on that player. And the, and the player should know better than to do that. That's what the money's for. Uh, I guess. Go out and we're paying you I number guess. four. I don't know. I wouldn't do it. I've seen uh, some of the Aust effects of that. Austin, yeah. Austin. No. We're going to pay you $5 million so there's Austin no pressure had on you. Two, Austin had 120 <laughs> NHL goals before you got that extension. Yeah. So fucking perform. Here's some money. <laughs> you know, I just want to say I'm really proud of you guys. Because I know you just brought up Austin Matthews, but... <laughs> You know, look at you. You talked about the Habs and the Oilers, and it didn't kill either of you. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? It did, yeah, right. Amazing. Isn't that great that it um, didn't kill either of you? Yeah. Tis the season to deck those halls, shave those balls, and get them all shiny with Manscaped. You got to use Dangle. Promo code Dangle at Manscaped.com gets you 20% off and free shipping. Now, you guys, that was, that was good. plenty of things that you can do, especially these are great stocking stuff. So, like, yeah. I'll reach behind me into my tickle trunk of manscapedness. Ah, the weed whacker. Okay, so the weed whacker is interesting because at a certain point, you reach an age where your nose hair gets longer than your nostril. And your ears. And your ears. And this is what the weed whacker is really good your for. Your mustache goes into your sinus. That's right. <laughs> people, people don't tell you that. You know what they call that? The thing in your ear? when They, 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 they call them your little pussy willows. That's actually what they call them. A pussy willow. That's what my grandmother used to call them for my grandfather. She's like, we are pussy willows. They're getting a little long there, dear. Let's retire that. I know. Like, <laughs> Let's retire it with the Manscaped <laughs> Weed Whacker. It's easy. And again, you got to go to manscaped.com. Uh-huh. Slash dangle or promo code dangle, whatever you want to do. And then you get 20% off for free shipping. Manscaped. Let's clear it, clear it up for the holidays, baby. Hey, so we have some experience with Shopify. Jesse. Yes. Tell us about it. Uh, stpnshop.ca is built on Shopify. Oh, so with Shopify, you're going to be able to customize your own online store, right, Jesse? Like ours. And discover new customers, right, Jesse? Like all the customers we have. And build the relationships you want to create with diehard fans, which we hope we've created with you. And it's funny because we, uh, uh, when Shopify came on as a partner, we were like, 
I didn't even know that Jesse had used Shopify as the platform. And then no. he's like, hey, did you know? Jesse doesn't tell us anything. No, he doesn't. Oh. He just does it. It's part of his charm. And thanks to their 24-7 <laughs> <laughs> support and free on-demand business courses, Shopify is on your team every step of the way. So when you're ready to take your winning idea to the world, team up with Shopify, the commerce platform powering millions of businesses, including ours, down the street and around the globe. Try out Shopify for free and start selling anywhere. And if you want to sign up for a free trial, shopify.com slash SDP, all lowercase. We didn't even get a free trial. We just did it. (laughs) Go to shopify.com slash SDP. You're getting a better deal than we did Ah! to start selling online today. Again, shopify.com slash SDP. (laughs) Steve Dangle Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Listen, uh, full disclosure, we are a uh, three guys that have all gone to therapy. Uh, we believe in it and we want you to check it out if you believe it's the right time for you. Now, the great thing about BetterHelp is you sign up and the great thing about uh, the Steve Dangle podcast listenership, first off, you're going to get a bit of discount, which I'll get to in a second, but you're going to be able to go, you get matched with a therapist. And the great thing, like traditional therapy was you went, you talked to a therapist, you had to have good chemistry with them. Otherwise you weren't going to get much done right. and you, uh, and, and you, you had to take time out of your day. And some people don't feel comfortable talking to a complete stranger in person. The great thing about BetterHelp is you can do it video, you can do it phone, you can do it on chat, uh, and you get let a match with somebody um, uh, very, very quickly. Like it's it's like within forty eight hours. So as I said before, you want to check this out, learn more, and save up to ten percent off of your first month at BetterHelp.com slash SDP. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash SDP. We do need to move on to a couple of other things, okay? Just because we do have a shorter show, so I'm going to move this a little bit faster than usual. Obviously, you guys saw, and I don't know, Jesse, if you need me to send it to you, the Jordan Bennington, Jason Zucker situation. Are we, are we doing the Leafs? Uh, yeah, we are. But okay. like, I was gonna, I was gonna do Benner first because I thought the visuals. Uh, okay. Do you want me to do the Leafs now? I don't care. Do you want to do the Leafs? Sure. I don't, well, I can do I don't care. I'm easy just, to work just with. Rare. I'll do whatever is put in front of me. What do we think just, about <laughs> Mitch Marner? 30 minutes into a Jesse, show. how do you feel, or sorry, Je- Steve, how do you feel about n- missing Mitch Marner's record breaking? I, uh, I uh, found out about it during the Oilers Habs game and I was sad that I missed it. I was sad that I missed it, but grateful to the Tampa Bay Lightning for having a six and a half hour ceremony for Steven Stamkos before the game. Because that way, I got to watch the final seven or eight minutes. Oh, that's cool. It was <laughs> once it was done. It, it, it was an odd ceremony. Yeah, I liked what, it. what was it for? His thousand, thousand one thousand game, yeah. Game. Oh, okay, yeah. that's a big one. Yeah, and it's cool that it came against Toronto. Yeah, and it was good yeah. to see his, his, his kids home. are so cute. They're so yeah. cute, like so, so cute. fun. To, it was just weird. Just different. <laughs> you didn't like it? It? Just a, it was just a, it was a little stilted. Uh, I, I heard he stilted. got a lot of gifts. Hmm? I heard he got a lot of. He gifts. got a putter. He got a Scotty Cameron putter. Yeah, he got a gold stick. He got uh, mini sticks for the kids. Two of those. He got a case of wine. Okay. It's nice that yeah. they gave him some stocking stuff. Or there, like that. there was a lot of random gifts. They, they also know, write him a $9 million check every year. They so. do that. But like some of those things, I'm like, Stamkos can afford to buy his own putter? <laughs> you know, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, if that was your point, then It's yeah. a stocking uh, stuffer. <laughs> yeah, if you make a golden eight. hockey stick, he would got that shit coming out of his ass. Come on. <laughs> right. That guy has so much money. It's ridiculous. And like barely any state tax. Yeah, I think he's okay. I think yeah. any gift you get for a millionaire is a burden. <laughs> right now i gotta do something with this yeah like guys i'm a millionaire i'll just buy it myself i'll just buy what i want yeah please don't get me anything um no yeah well here's a putter cool it's always nice to get an individual golf club I definitely don't want a matching set no thank you for this Mitch your putter your putter is an individual the, club. it was, oh, is it? It was usually, i don't know anything about golf in your set yeah well, it was super nice what they said about him it's though fucking stupid it. anyway i'm trying to get I'm back kidding. to it because again we're limited on time oh, my bad. Okay. uh I, it was nice what they were saying about him in the actual yes. thing like you know the 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 effect he's had on the community and the uh how he's you know the way that he has treated the organization in Tampa itself and humility and all the other things that he's known for. So that was cool. Uh, um, his decision to not sign with the Leafs. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it was slightly correct. It was slightly Best correct. Best decision ever. Yeah. Now, uh, when it comes to Mitch Marner breaking that streak, that was, it was nice to see that happen. Oh, and with a goal. And with a goal. 
You want to see it with a goal. Yeah, you, 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 you want to see it with a goal. It's better. Shorthanded goal. Amazing. Him and David Kampf are uh, the kiss of death shorthanded. The I one love thing, those two together. Honestly, we were all wondering what the hell would happen to the least penalty kill without Zach Hyman. That is one area where they did not suffer. That is, well, dude. David Kampf was a great signing. One thing I've been paying attention to, again, Camp Sharon, uh, back on uh, on Twitter. Used what to does that guy know? Uh, well, he knows quite a bit. Um, and one one of the things he's been talking about, I'm I'm relating two things. He didn't talk about David Camp specifically, but he talked about uh, the public data that we have not matching what NHL teams have at all. Oh, and when David Camp was signed by the Leafs, his Chicago numbers were terrible, and everyone's like, okay, he had one goal last year. Mm -hmm. You gave him two years. What are you thinking? And where on God's green earth would this team be without David Camp? I want to know. I want to know something. Did the private numbers that are available in the NHL show that he was a good player? I assume so, because the Leafs got him. Because <laughs> you, you want to make a million dollars or $10 million? Build an actual, uh, build a model that mirrors what the NHL teams are looking at. It, build that model. You can't get the uh, information that they have in terms of player tracking. You need like a if, staff. Yeah, you need, you need a group of people. And you also need access to... Like the tracker that they have in their skate. Like I can't, I can't, I can't send yeah. you that, you right. know, <laughs> they, I think, I don't think one person can do it. Mm -hmm. that you no, have to, I don't think so. You mm -hmm. have to watch so much goddamn hockey for context and s save percentages. Uh, like we still talk about it on this show, but like we pick and choose when we apply it. Yep. <laughs> we we go, yeah, this guy's got a bad save percentage, but he plays for a bad team, so we ignore it. This guy's got a good save percentage, but we ignore it because he's got a good team, so we don't talk about it. This guy plays for a mediocre team, and he's a 925. Well, yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty that, good. That's the context that people should be looking at stats as. Like, you can't just take catch-all numbers oh, and be like, okay, this totally is the agree. ranking. No, there's context of the situations of the game, the team, and the player, and the not the things don't happen in a vacuum. It's like goaltending mm -hmm. save percentage is going to be lower on a team that sucks. Sure. It's Even also, if the goalie's good. Like, in the context of, of the season and the league, right now, I believe, I was going to do, uh, do goalies suck right now on the uh, Jesse Blake Sports Report, <laughs> because... Right now, we are at the lowest save percentage in 16 years. The NHL, like, yeah. so we have to change our perspective on what a good number is. Maybe now we look at a 905 and we say, mm -hmm. oh, that's that's decent because of the context of the league. Do goalies suck right now or do defenses suck right now or are forwards unbelievable right mm -hmm. now or are defenders Better than they were 10 years ago, but they're not as good at defending. They're better at no, moving. There's so I, much that moving Listen, parts. I yeah. want to make the NHL Tortorella again. Make yeah. the NHL Tortorella again. I want slow. I'd wear that baseball cap. 2-1 games mm. again. Uh, no. I would put that flag on a hockey stick and stick it in the back of my truck. So the Marner thing is special, and it's cool to see because now we're getting to the point in their careers where Matthews and Marner are starting to do things that break Leaf records, and they're doing it early because there aren't a lot of Leaf records. <laughs> um, true, the Leafs have oh. a, 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 Andrew, Berkshire, current, yeah. Andrew Berkshire tweeted the most devastating thing about the Toronto Maple Leafs that anyone has ever tweeted. What's that? And he didn't even mean to. What's that? Mm -hmm. uh, in 2017, when they were celebrating their 100th year, mm -hmm. the Leafs put together a top 100 team. Oh, I know. And I know. when you look at the team, what Andrew s tweeted, and I'm paraphrasing here, I hope we can find this tweet one day, is it's kind of surprising for a team that's been around as long as Toronto has, how few superstars they've had. Mm -hmm. Nearly none. Nearly none. Yep. And even in the 60s, they had stars, but they didn't have, uh, I mean, Bobby Orr came, came along later, but uh, Bobby Hall. Or uh, Beliveau, Beliveau, Richard, everybody that played for the Canadians, Sawchuck, but tail end of Sawchuck. Mm -hmm. We have, we have, like you'll you'll we rattle flashes. off names, flashes. You'll we'll, we'll rattle off names uh, in who are revered Leafs. I feel like a lot of them are not necessarily revered from others in hockey. Right. Everyone is like, well, Beliveau, yeah, it's an all time great. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know if like Boria Salming was one of those guys. Mm -hmm. He was one of those guys, was one of those guys. And, and like he's he's 
uh, both a, an amazing individual performer and an interesting story in that sure. he was a trailblazer. But like, I I wonder what the rest of the league looks at uh, Dave Keon's career, like historically. Because Dave Keon wasn't like a lights out scorer. He was very very good, right. but he was a two way guy. Yeah, he was a he was a two way guy and, and he won was a, a lot and yeah. won a lot. And no, won there's a, lot. a very easy case to be made that at no point in the history of the Toronto Maple Leafs they've ever had the best player of the National Hockey League they on have. their team. Was it Matthews the first Heart winner? Yes, and no, no first, second. First Hart was in the 30s, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. No, he was not the half first. Day. He was the first outside of the original six, uh, for yeah. sure. I don't even think the Leafs have a Vesna trophy. Mm, or if it, if it happened, it happened in the 50s. I think Sawchuck and Bauer split it. They have three Hart trophies. Who, who got uh, them? Let me three. read it to you. Three Hart trophies it's, in 105 years. I remember yeah. it. Austin Matthews. Ted Kennedy, oh, 54, 55, uh, and then Babe Pratt in 43, 44. Now, there's a 43, 44 name for you. They Babe got, Pratt. Uh, what was the other one you wanted to know? Vesna. Vesna Trophy. Uh, Turk Broda, mm -hmm. Al Rollins, Harry Lumley, Johnny Bauer twice, hey. and then Terry Sawchuk, the one he split with Johnny Bauer as well in 64, 65. So, it's been since 64, 65 that they've had a Vesna Trophy winner. Like... The, okay, Rocket, the team has gone 60 years without a Vesna. Austin Matthews was the first Rocket and Obviously. first Ted Lindsay. Rocket's and, only recent anyway. Ted Lindsay's pretty recent. Yeah, and they're on, a, they're on a 14-year Mark Messier Leadership Award drought. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> what? Can I give you some stats, too, on uh, Marner's yeah, point streak? Leaders. What's the longest point streak in the history of the NHL? Quick trivia. Oh, I looked this up the other day. I think it's 51 games, and it's Gretzky. 51 Gretzky. Holy ding, ding, shit. ding, ding, ding. You want to know how many points he had during that 120. streak? 120. What's your guess? 120. 163. What 100, the fuck? No, incorrect. 153. Oh. He had hey, way to go, idiot. He had 61 goals. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> what oh, the fuck? Um, He's here, so fucking here's crazy. Some, here's some other ones. Uh, streaks longer than 19 since 1992. There's only been nine of them. Wow. Uh, Adam Oates, 20. Paul Stastny, 20. Patrick Kane, Paul 20. Paul Stastny? Paul Stastny, 06, 07, had a 20-game point streak. Wow. Adam Oates, 92, 93, 21. Danny Heatley, 05, 06, 22. Like Brett Hall, 25. Crosby, if you remember, Crosby holds uh, this. As he's in number two in the modern day after lockout record. What he has this? 25, Crosby, and 10, 11. Uh -huh. He was unbelievable. Modern yeah. day record, I give it pa like past lockout record, Patrick Kane. We all know that one. 26 points in a row, 15, hmm. 16. And then Matt Sundin, 30 game point streak in 92, 93. With Quebec. What? With Quebec. Ah, yes. ah, get out of right. here. So, the goal for Mitch is like 30. Can we do it? You know what? When you, when <laughs> yeah. you actually, when you look at, um, if you go back and look at this, the fact that the Leafs were able to get a young, tall center for an aged Wendell Clark, and no offense to Wendell fans or Wendell himself, it's shocking that mm -hmm. the Leafs got Matt Sundin in the first place. Oh, dude. They should never have ever been in that conversation. That was an era of bad trades, but they made two really good ones. Gilmore yeah. and Sundin. Yeah, and if they and had that held, was a good one. If they had held on a little longer to some other players, like Cliff, Cliff Fletcher was the, the king of overplaying his hand. So he would... He would win a trade, Gilmore. He would win a trade, Sundin. And I know people were upset about Sundin and Don Cherry was Don Cherry about it or whatever. But Sundin had, was coming off like a 100-point season in Quebec, his only 100-point season. And so you have Gilmore, Sundin lining up down the middle for the next three or four years, right? Mm -hmm. If you had hung on to Anderchuk, hung on to Dave or, or Mike Gardner, because Mike Gardner had five more 30-goal years left. D Dave Anderchuk was winning a cup in 2004, 2005 or something, like whenever the, the Lightning yeah. won. Yeah. Um, like, if you had hung on to some of those core guys, not fucking traded Kenny Johnson, who was amazing That's to the one. Islanders for Wendell Clark, that team would have been good all the way through the 90s. Along with a first round pick that I believe was Roberto Luongo, if I'm not mistaken. And Niedermeyer. There was a Niedermeyer pick to Jersey. That, that was for, oh my God, what the hell's the guy's name? Oh, I forget. But there's also a really bad one. Um, the Leafs traded. Ah, I remember now. So it's it's tied to the Scott Niedermeyer pick. Mm -hmm. The Leafs traded that pick a year ahead of time. Kiss of death. You don't trade you don't a first do round pick a year ahead of time. So they think they're going to be really good. Guess what? They were shit. So this there's no lottery. 
Mm -hmm. It's if you're last, you're first Mm -hmm. when it comes to picking. So the Leafs are in great danger of finishing last. And they don't want to finish last because this is the Eric Lindros draft. Mm. And they you don't want to finish oh, last. Oh, I know what they did. I know who they did. So they Curvers, made, right? No, no, no. So oh, I, that's who it was. It was Curvers who was the, uh, they acquired for the Niedermeyer pick. But what ended up happening uh, was Quebec did want to finish last because they did have their first round pick. So they approached the Leafs and they said, hey, we could help each other out. You don't want to finish last. We do. Mm -hmm. So they made a bunch of trades that artificially made the Leafs a little bit better and the Nordiques a little bit worse Mm -hmm. so that the Nordiques could lock in that first overall pick. They get Eric Lindros, who they don't even get to keep. Yeah. But then they make a trade that sets them up for the next like 20 years. I also think, too, if, if the Leafs had been really smart at the end of the late 80s and make no mistake, they weren't. Eddie Olchuk. And oh. Vinny Danfus. They traded Vinny Danfus right as he was peaking. That's a tough one. And he was good all the way through the 90s as well. There's a lot of, like, like Cliff Fletcher would be like, okay, sir, that's a 21. And he's like, hit me again. Like, just, he just <laughs> overplays it. Overplays so it. on Mitch Marner. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think... I want to talk more about Kenny Johnson. <clears throat> oh, I loved Kenny Johnson. I, I, I know he's not a centerman, but Mitch Marner should win the Selkie Award this year. He's the best defensive forward in the league. He should be in the conversation, but this is, uh, listen, Jeff Merrick is a big hockey conspiracy theory guy. And, you know, he, he would talk about them on ice surfing all the time. And I'd be like, all right, dad. Mm-hmm. And, but there's one where he's bang on. Um, they make it so hard for a winger to win the Selkie. Hosa never won one. Disrespect. Mm-hmm. And now I worry that there's this weird double-edged sword where because he didn't win one i don't even know if he got nominated for one but because he didn't do it well is marner better than him you're right well no he's not better than him so not only is he not going to win the selkie we're not even going to nominate him for it because he's not better than this guy who's probably going to be in the hall of fame i think we should 100 percent change our thinking on that and just watching mitch marner everything he does especially on the penalty kill like that counts like yes. the dude is incredible. 100%. They played him at defense. He's the best defensive forward in the league. Give him some credit. Give him some uh, votes for Selkie. He's up there. Like I mean, yeah, he's got warts, but he's the Leafs would be pretty boned without him. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, move on quickly here to the end of the game. What exactly <laughs> is a kicking motion in the NHL? And <sighs> and did John Tavares kick that puck? I don't. I mean, yes. Yeah. Okay. Did he kick it? Yes. Is it a distinct kicking motion? I say no. I think he did it on purpose. I think John Tavares is very skilled. I think 100% he did it on purpose. Yeah. It's not a distinct kicking motion. I think, what, I think he what, kicked it. What isn't, about, what isn't distinct about it? Mm-hmm. Well, like, okay. That's a very good question. <laughs> here, use my, use yeah. my hand. My, my phone is your kick. My okay. phone is the foot. Describe it for people listening. So, here, here you go. If you're listening, here's me. Oh, God. What is that? I spilled my water. I spilled my water. Okay, there's the TV. Can you see the TV? There. Don't do it. What did I just do to the TV? Did I kick it or nudge it? You gave it a nudge. I gave it a nudge, but you could say I kicked it. It's everything with your foot making contact with anything is a kick, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's, that's how it is in the NHL. I've seen goals count against the Leafs, yes, but I've seen goals count that were so clearly a kick clearly a kick there was one in particular that went the leafs way earlier this year kadri boot oh. no uh was there one? Oh no i guess no not, no that, that was, that was like the a, devil's one because yeah. that was clearly a kick yeah <laughs> but kadri there was one where he booted the fucking thing but it's because his foot is done or his leg is done extending a fraction of a second before the puck makes contact right mm-hmm. so he kicks his leg the and then puck, slides into the puck. Yeah, and the puck makes contact with the leg he just kicked out, uh, and it goes in, but that's a deflection. Well, no, no, no. Why, why am I not allowed to kick the puck into the net? Right. Because if everyone's allowed to just kick the puck into the net, we'll kill each other, right? But that's fine. Kicking the puck a fraction before contact is fine. Redirecting it with the side of your foot is fine. Like, Tavar, I think if Tavares 
wanted to kick the thing into the net, wouldn't he have done it with any part of his skate that made sense and not the heel? Which he did. Mm-hmm. I so you can call it a kick if you want, but don't call it a distinct kicking motion. That's not how you kick things. The way that he put the puck into the net is not how you kick things. Right, and the rule is that it has a to distinct be a distinct kicking, kicking motion. motion. Yeah, and I'm only being that's difficult fair. about this. Like, if there's any lightning fans who are like, "Oh, salty tears, whatever." Yes, that's what tears are made of—water and salt. But yeah, that's science majors. You fuck off. I'm correct. Where was I going with that? I don't know. I don't know. You got distracted. No, you, didn't no. to, you didn't need to argue with the comment <laughs> section. I've seen too many stupid. You're right. I've seen too many stupid um, goals count <laughs> for me to know 100% if whether or not that's a kick. The rule is so blurry. Okay. Like, there's no, yeah. there's so, no distinction. So then the Leafs go to overtime. And wow. it's a quick, painful death. Dude, they're... Uh, so so deep in their own heads why uh because they they anticipate failure we are i don't want to be a boomer about this but this is why they lose game sevens because they think they're gonna they anticipate failure how did they anticipate failure? You think the Matthews turnover? Is it who, is yes! it who they put over? What, what like who? who what no, is it? Because because the, the reason they lost is Matthews turns over the pocket right to the Lightning. You know, yeah. like that's that's what happened. And here, but I don't think that it was a mental lapse because he thinks he's going to lose three on three. So so then think, they're just bad. I think he's just this. not great at that, and you can't make that play. But they were good so, at this before. They used this to be the, pretty good at this. This was not a this is were not they? a team that. Oh yeah, this is not yeah. a team that's traditionally bad in overtime. Okay. This is new this year. This is way new. Mm-hmm. They didn't. Okay, I'll, I'll have a look at their records. Uh, sure. uh, Maple Leafs. Matthews records. has scored how many overtime winners? Tavares mm-hmm. two, Marner two. So you think Riley that two? that turnover he makes at the when he enters the zone, he turns around, he sends it right to the Lightning. That turnover is a mental lapse because they think they're going to lose. I think so. Okay, like, let me okay. Get, Matthews at three on three is clearly not as good as he is at five on five, mm-hmm. and there's got to be something. All right, give it. Give me a second here. I want to tell you guys, this is how stark this is. Okay. 26 games this year. The Leafs have lost six times in overtime. Mm-hmm. Last out, of, year, out of seven. At, last year, they lost seven the entire the year. The whole season? The year before in 56, they lost seven. The year before in 70 games because of the, the, the shortened uh, COVID, nine. The year before that, eight. So they are, they're on pace to quadruple what they have historically done with this group they're on pace to lose like 15 20 games in overtime (laughs) right it's and that's 15 or 20 points but uh they're way 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 the last time their own heads they lost this many i believe is yes uh babcock second year matthews first where they won 40 but then they lost 15 in overtime and actually finished below 500 in the 16 17 season and still isn't that nuts wow yeah yeah, but they had a lot of OTLs there, and that they that team yeah. gave up a lot of shit. Yeah. And, they gave a lot of leads, and though, so we're talking about the Matthews turnover. Uh, Matt Murray has been a wonderful Maple Leaf. One, that's one a, time. That's a bad goal. One, one bad goal. I'll give it to him. Yeah, right. Yeah, but like I'm with you, Jess. Part of me, like I watch that, and I'm like, okay, we're talking about this. It's a hundred percent a thing. You know, you lose six of seven. It's a thing. But are we putting too much into the yips? Uh, their mental lapses. Are we putting too much into that? Because your goalie's got to have that puck. It's at, like, I, I'm yes. not going to disrespect the guy. He's a multiple. He's a multi-time champion. Who am I talking about? Matt Murray or Alex Kalorn? Both of them. <laughs> but, you know, both of those guys have won back-to-back cups. That's Alex Kalorn. Dude, like he's not even in the top 10 most dangerous shooters on this team. He's not. You're disrespectful. He's not. You're disrespectful. Kucherov. Yeah. Stamkos. Yeah. Hedman. Yeah. Point. Yeah. Sorelli. Yeah. Uh, f- fuck. I'd probably rather face Kalorn than Perry. Sure. Uh, who else we got Zach on that? Zach Bogosian. Godforsaken team. Why don't I just yeah. name them all? Dude. He's, he's Murray, definitely not top five. Matt Murray is undefeated in regulation since coming back from injury. Of, That's wild. Of wow. the seven, I believe he's 5-0-2. Oh, of those seven games, he's got one bad goal. 
Yeah, I, I think I, he's got one bad goal and it happened on Saturday. He's yeah. been solid. He's Locked been solid. great. Yeah, no, I, I'll give it to him. Like that's I'm not, fine. I'm not gonna make this about him and all. Mm-hmm. You lost the game for the team. No, I think he helped get the game to overtime. Yeah, I don't know how to fix the OT thing. Like it's 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 a, it's a thing. And like those lapses in judgment. If you think it's because of mentally they're going into it, how to lose? I don't know how to fix that. I that I'm throwing my hands. Well, off. Matt Murray so is confusing. a guy that decidedly, if anybody doesn't have the yips, it's him. That right. guy's played in pressure situations. Um, so at least this time, it's not the goaltending. There are times... Oh, wow, Steve, that's fantastic. I, th- I think um, this water bottle's fucked. Lots of water on Steve. Um, uh, I think that in the past, I think Freddie Anderson for sure had it. Um, as much as I love Freddie's era, uh, he was. there were times where he was unbelievable in the playoffs, but a good chunk of the time he was not. And aim five hole. And, and exactly. aim five hole. And what's he going to do? Aim five hole. So you, at least fix three on three. Well, at least I, I think you, you got to keep just doing it and then starting to believe that you can. And I wonder if doing things like starting David Camp, uh, you know, as the first line out there night, they didn't do that in overtime, but not putting out like if you're, if your star players aren't getting it, you throw those fucking players out there until they do. What's the LFR lineup? Give it to me. My LFR lineup. I don't remember who I had on defense. Do you? Uh, Mete. Mete? Yeah. So Mete, Giordano, I don't care. One, one of the, those two. Because that's all you have. And, yeah. and I do Kampf, Engvall. You're out of your mind. <laughs> I know, nope. right? so, I was you're, so upset. And you're talking about the Leafs <laughs> galaxy branding it? You're galaxy branding it. I was so you play upset. Matthews, Matthews Marner. Who scored the winner? Who scored the winner? Matthews, Who scored the winner? Marner. Who scored the winner? Matthews Marner. Answer the fucking And question. their best defenseman that game, who's Giordano. Who scored the winner? For if, Tampa. If you did I forget. that. I don't know. Killorn. Yeah. And you forget because it's Killorn. Steve. So don't tell me someone in your depth. Here, yo, here's the difference with Killorn versus Engvall and Kampf. Killorn has a multi-year contract where he's worth like five million bucks a year. You're talking about literally throwing out three and a half million dollars. You're fired. Why are I'm you, yeah, you, yeah, why are you playing? Who, who scored why the winner for you, the Devils? Yeah, who else was on the, who was on? Who scored the winner for the Devils? Uh, that, uh, the really, the really long Russian name guy. Sharon Govich. That's right. Who scored the winner for the Leafs? I don't know. Nick Robertson. Mm. Mm. Now there's a guy I'd put out in overtime. You'd put him out in overtime? Absolutely. I'd you're put putting him a rookie out. out in overtime? For sure. Fired. I'm firing you immediately. Why would you fire him immediately? I think there's a I'm difference between, between no, I'm firing you immediately. Robertson <laughs> didn't start that OT. That's right. Maybe you should have. You want it. Okay. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if there's anything we've learned, it's there's always a catch. So when we first heard about Mint Mobile and the premium wireless services they're offering at 15 bucks a month, we thought, is there a catch? Ah, but after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't a catch. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those savings on to you. For anybody who doesn't love their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless at just 15 bucks a month. Now, I should say this is USA only. Mm-hmm. I know we get a ton of Canadian listeners who are like, when? Well... We don't it's, know. You should also say that the secret sauce is just soy sauce with a little bit of sugar. That's true. Like, Good point. That, it's Very teriyaki. You know? uh, it's always. All plans is come with unlimited talk is? and text. Yes. That's how uh, they make teriyaki sauce. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. It's soy sauce and a little sugar. Teriyaki. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what Mint Mobile uses. Exactly. Yeah. Only there's this mint here. Uh, all plans come with unlimited there talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network to get your wireless plan for 15 bucks a month. And get the plan shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash SDP. That's mintmobile.com slash SDP. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash SDP. USA only. Despite what you may have heard, Athletic Greens is not just for people who are colored green and athletic. Oh, thank goodness. So it's the Grinch and the rest of us. That's right. (laughs) Athletic Greens gives you a stronger immune system, better gut health, more appreciation for gifts at Christmas. No, that's not actually a claim. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> a bigger heart. You've got to check it three times the size. A dog named Milo. Uh, Cindy Lou. Uh, no, no, you got to check out Athletic Greens. Well, Milo's Listen, from the other Jesse, movie. you've had Athletic Greens a lot. I know yeah. CJ's a huge fan of it too. Athletic Greens, tell me about it. What do you love about it? Yeah, and uh, Lewis Hamilton uses it too. So that's if, why you If it's it. good enough for Lewis, it's good enough for you. And you know, with Le- Lewis. I think he's, is he vegan? There's some sort of thing that he is. Is he? I'm not sure. I don't know. But anyway, listen, if you're, or if you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, F1 driver, it <laughs> comes with less than a gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, while still tasting good. And right now, it's time to reclaim your health 
And arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition to make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D. How cool is that? And uh, also, uh, five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com. Promo code. Yes, DP. That's right. Thank you, Jesse. Again, it's athleticgreens.com promo code. Slash. slash you, can, you can just go at athleticgreens.com slash SDP. Oh, yeah. It'll take you right there and it'll say, hey, here's your offer. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate in daily nutrition. Hey, here's your offer. All right. We got to move on. We got to move on. Uh, I want to talk about Bennington. Uh, I don't think we're going to have time for Truba, but I do want to talk about Bennington it's because uh, Truba, uh, sorry. Um, St. Louis is not playing great. Bennington's not playing great. Jason Zucker of the Pittsburgh Penguins tries to get behind the net. And listen, when the Pittsburgh Penguins are beating up on you four to one, it can't feel good because they stink this year. And no, you, they stink against the Leafs. They're fine. Okay, yeah. you saw you saw that you saw that Bennington put out his glove. You saw that it hit Zucker in the face. Chicken shit. Chicken shit move. Yeah. Uh, after what we talked about with Stall. And I thought, okay, so we I, I sent Jesse the screen grab. The next unless you game, want. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. but what I thought was the most interesting was his head coach. Craig Berube saying, it's got to stop. It doesn't help anything. Just play goal. Stop the puck. And here's what he's if talking about. If you're a about. goaltender, tend the goal. Jordan Bennington this year is 9-10-0 with a 327 goals against average and an 895 save. In his career, his save percentage has only ever gone down season over season, and his goals against average has only ever gone up. Like that goal, J- Jesse's got his the goal that led to him getting pulled. That's that people stinks. gave me shit. That Blues fans stinks. gave me shit forever for saying this guy's a fucking wiener. Oh, we that's the half of this podcast. Listen, is fucking Bennington's a clown show. He's he is. He's bad. He's good. He's an up and down goalie. No, but the one thing he is all the time is a wiener. Yep. I, honestly, he's insufferable. And it's enough because you're not good enough anymore for and this shit. Don't take it from Jesse. Don't take it from me. Don't take it from Adam. Take it from Craig Berube. Yeah. Did you watch that postgame press conference? He was pissed. If he could Homer Simpson Jordan Bennington throat like Bart, he would. Ah, ah. He'd, he'd choke the hell out of him. He's This goalie is driving him nuts. And then Okay, I'll send Thomas Grice in there. Falls down like it's a friggin' cartoon. Oh, that was bad. If Baruby could take oh, the net language. away from Bennington right now, he would. But mm-hmm. Thomas Grice is behind him. If, if it was still Villiuso, we wouldn't see you. Bennington until New Year's. Thank you. They'd have a new starting goaltender, and it'd be a tenfold upgrade. Like, I'm sure his teammates are sick of it. His head coach is sick of it. I'm sure Doug Armstrong's sick of it, too. Because <laughs> you have to be good if you're going to pull this kind of shit. And he's not good right now. It's awful. No, but he only pulls the shit when he's bad. Re- remember when he like fake punched to, uh, uh, I think it was, was it Eric Carlson and Devin Dubnik? I can't yeah. remember. Um, he was in the middle of getting pulled. This isn't even the second time. I'm pretty sure he's gotten a penalty after getting pulled, which why and what's the way- he talking about going to the, when he go, we didn't even talk about the fact that he takes off his helmet and tries to shit talk the Penguins bench. You what are, are you going to say? One hundred and seventy-two pounds. Thank your lucky stars. The St. Louis Blues are behind you. <laughs> I'd beat you up. Oh, but you can't. You can't touch. I, I saw like, Marty Buran on TV. Take him seriously. You can't touch goaltenders. We can't have these. And you're right. He's right. But like, honestly, honestly, and Marty's Marty is right. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Was he? What is he talking? He's saying about? you can't touch goaltenders. But then he's saying. But but he's like, Bennington keeps asking for it. What's he doing? Yeah. Because Biron is of the generation that had to fight to get people to stop fucking crashing the net. Because when we were yeah. growing up, yeah. what they used to tell you, and it was on Rock'em Sock'em VHSs, look it up, crash the net. They'd say, go hard in the net, crash the net, hit the goalie. And it was Biron's generation that said, uh, fucking stop because the injuries are getting crazy and we can't, mm. as Jesse said on the last show so eloquently, goaltending's a special position. It's not as though there's this gigantic uh, amount of talent behind these oh, starters. It's a special position, but it's not a Super Mario invincibility star. Yes. You can't go hitting whoever you want mm-hmm. just because you're a goalie. Yes. When you run into Jordan Stahl, he's going to run you over. Yeah, and, and Biron's like, yo, <laughs> we just put in all this work for you, bro. And like, it's one thing if there's a 50-50 puck Mm-hmm. And Jack Campbell decides to lay down the shoulder and rock you like he did in the first game against the Canucks. Hilarious, by the way. Hilarious, clean, 
No problem with that. I thought it was fine. Mm-hmm. But sticking out your hand, oh. like Zucker, like who has played very little hockey over the last little while with all this injury. Like what if, what if he gets concussed Why? or slamming his head into the board? So, so let me ask you this. Why is that not a suspension? Okay. So it's funny you should say that. What I was going to suggest, uh, first of all, it's not a suspension because it's barely a league. Uh, okay. Because that should be a suspension, right? The difference between this and what Aaron Dell did last year is what Aaron Dell did was, was worse. But um, the player was hurt. I don't remember who it was. Josh Norris? Uh, I don't know. Drake Batherson? I, I can't remember. I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, it was Drake Batherson, and that's why he was missed Sparta the All-Star Cat. game. It was Sparta, it was Sparta, Cat. Sparta Cat. Um was What I was going to suggest is, like, think about it, okay? Uh, Bennington got praise. I remember this. It was the most pathetic thing ever. He got praise after getting pulled and then doing that fake punch shit because then the Blues came back and won that game. Right. And then there were people trying to say, oh, that's what sparked the T. Shut up. Shut up. That's not what happened. You're dreaming. I like stories too. That's enough. I like fairy tales. I don't like lies. They're liver king. Hockey liver king. (laughs) Like, that's... Yeah, if I'm a goalie and I got pulled mm-hmm. and I want to uh, get my team going, what? why not just beak at the bench and do whatever I want and fuck with people? And No, there's got to be like some sort of penalty that carries over, that, some sort of stupid tax that you pay. Right. You can't the next time you shit. pay the Penguins, you're down, to, uh, you're down a man to start the game. <laughs> like, I don't think the Blues would ever do this, but... Uh, there are teams in NHL history that I think next time he tries to pull the shit, we'll just let him get rocked. I don't think the Blues are that team. No, I don't think so either. He's no. got to watch his fucking mouth. Yeah, you can't talk shit when you're getting pulled for being bad. Or right, I tell you what, that's what's happening. Here. I tell, I tell yes, you what. Yes, yes, Jesse. yes. Mm-hmm. I, I tell you what. Bennington is allowed to do whatever he wants if he's willing to fight his own fight, which I think he is. <laughs> but my money is on him getting beat up. He, I don't think he, like... He, I, I think he is wants he to... Is he trying fight. to fight, or is he trying yes. to hold me back, uh, bro? I think... I th- No, I don't think it's fake. Um, I do genuinely think... He, listen, he's fiery. He wants to fight. Mm-hmm. I do genuinely... But and okay, only a goalie is allowed to fight him per NHL rules. Well, I don't know if that's... Is that necessarily somebody, the rule? I don't know no? if that's the rule. Can we get Ryan Reeves You in can, there? but the problem is... Ray is that Emery fought Andrew Peters, who was like a top 10 true. heavyweight. The thing is, though, when you do that, is that most teams jump in and and, and jump on, on the guy so that the goalie doesn't have yeah. to fight. Yeah. I think here's the thing, man, too. Have you ever been punched in the face? You don't forget the first time. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> if you've been punched in the face, you probably remember the first time. Whether it was your, your, your brother and you guys were accidentally wrestling, or it was some stranger and you were fighting in hockey or whatever it was. I don't think Jordan Bennington's ever been punched in the face. He's and been I in think, a goalie fight. Okay. <laughs> what, what kind of goalie fight was it? Was it a tussle and grab or was it a punch, punch I, up? I, I need to look it up. Uh, Bennington, I think it was in the A. Jesse's looking it up right now. Bennington goalie fight. I, Adam, I don't think this is a matter of a guy who's never been in a fight. I think this oh, is he a, fought Phoenix Copley. That's who it no. was. And it was a goalie fight. The shots at the time were 19 to 4. It was 4 <laughs> nothing for Providence. Yeah, and he was on Providence. He was on Providence because he got loaned to You know what? I think he won the cup that year. Calder. No, the cup. The Stanley, Stanley Cup. Oh, this year. Cuz the Blues lent him to the Bruins farm team. This is a nothing fight by the way. This is a grab. Yeah. Copley just basically jerseys him without jerseying him and then they yeah. Oh my God. What is that? There it is. Oh, that's a nothing fight. Oh, Benner. A lot of grabbing. He's backing up. A lot of grabbing. He's the one backing up. Yeah, of course he is. <laughs> Adam, you really don't like him. Right? No, I just listen. I would. I, uh, I respect a good trash no. talker. This guy. He, he's <laughs> grabbing his leg. <laughs> it's not a good fight. It's not a good fight. Yeah, this fight's Again, not a good I go fight. back to, and also, let's be honest, goalies train differently than players. You want to fight a player. It's a hell of a lot different. Go tra- players are training to hit. 
goalies are training to go side to side and up and down. Yeah, I'm not here to tell you he would win a fight against Tristan Jari or, or Casey DeSmith or whoever was in net for the Penguins. This dude keeps fucking with skaters. It's a different body style, man. Way different. The Blues don't want to deal with this. His coach obviously doesn't want to deal with this. And the refs don't want to deal with this. They're going to look for every reason to slap this guy. They are. And it's one thing if you do this and you're able to win your team games, mm-hmm. Billy Smith. Mm-hmm. Billy Smith used to fuck with players all the Billy time. And then, they win awesome. the, and then they win the cup. Yes. Right? I don't remember Bennington do, doing this when the Blues couldn't lose and ended up winning the cup. No, no. He was. He, was he does this when they're losing. Well, he was doing right. it the, the immediately following that season, though. He's been doing this forever. Yeah, because he's been bad ever since, basically. <laughs> there's there's a history here of goalies talking like a lot of smack, and Jordan Bennington's trying to enter that pool because he's a hothead and can't control his temper, but like it's not working anymore. He's yeah, like these aren't brilliant criminal mastermind mind games. No. This is he's thrown off and shaking with rage he's angry because <laughs> yeah. his emotions are getting the best of him yeah and he's not helping his team anymore and he's chirping at zucker like what, you you hit a guy what are you talking about yeah. man like any other player does that they get called you got called what's the confusion here why are you upset also stop letting in four goals that was a bad shot and you let it in <laughs> like, it's over <laughs> all right so uh we'll wrap it up there by the way i want to quickly ask you guys true hit clean or dirty Dirty. He very, very obviously leaves his feet before making contact. Jesse, cl- clean or dirty? I think it's dirty, but it's okay because he was trying to get back at the the when they were fucking messing with his shit and they pulled the stick right. uh, the other night. Who was it versus the Oilers where they pulled uh, Truba's stick and he didn't do anything? Oh, right. Yeah. You know, it's try- it's, we're trying to stick up for ourselves here because the Rangers are getting punched around right now and it's not great and losing that game. Uh, to Chicago is not a good look, and what, they're trying to get anything started, and it's not really. And what did you think of Athanasius' Anth- yeah. comments afterwards, saying like, "Guy's got no goals, and he gets eight million bucks a year"? So I guess he was just trying trying to hurt someone. I think it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah? Um, I thought that was cool. Like, listen, I, don't, <laughs> I like that shit. Uh, listen, a lot of Truba's hits have hurt people, and they've been borderline. But I think a big reason why he hasn't been suspended is I can't remember them all individually right now, but like they weren't dirty. Mm-hmm. This one to me was dirty. Um, it was clean except for he left his feet. I don't have a problem with hits. I don't even have a problem with guys getting hurt from hits because it's a contact sport and it happens. Darlene on Nieto yesterday. That's one of the best hits of the last half decade. Mm -hmm. What a fucking cracker of a hit. And tomorrow it's going to be on hat picks guaranteed because I like to highlight those great hits. There you go. But so is Truba going to be a hat pick or a dang it? Uh, it's going to be neither. It should be a suspension. He left his feet. There you go. All right. I didn't know suspension. Let's wrap her up. So Maybe we will fine. See should have at least been a penalty. Yeah. We will see you Wednesday and Friday this week. Until then, we love you. And don't forget a brand new CJ show out today as well. Ooh. Oh, I can't wait. William Every- Nylander's on pace for 40 goals, 44 goals. I want to get that in there. Who cares? Trade him. He sucks. Best player on the Ooh. Leafs right now. Jason Robinson. Don't like Swedish good looking guys. Second. Mitch Marner, streak versus streak. On Tuesday, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what? You didn't know that? <laughs> no, 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 I was like, where are you going? You delivered it. It was so <laughs> Why funny. Well, because you- I'm running out of time. <laughs> Steve. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Get it sports book. Follow the guys on Twitter. At Steve underscore Dangle. At Adam W-Y-L-D-E. And at Jesse Blake. Connection complete. Wow.